high sensitivity accelerometers, 500 millivolts per G, 1000 millivolts per G, even 10,000 millivolts per G or 10 volts per G if you prefer, are used in seismic vibration monitoring applications, buildings, uh, bridges, uh, stadiums, uh, measuring the motion of these structures. If you've ever been walking on a bridge and felt the vibration under your feet as uh, some vehicle traffic goes by, that small amount of vibration occurring at low frequencies, that's the type of vibration that these sensors uh, are trying to pick up. So they're very sensitive and they have a very good resolution and a lot of output. Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Industrial Product Manager for the Mobile Shop. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate a PCB Piezotronics Model 393B12 High Sensitivity Accelerometer, that's 10 volts per G, with our model 9210D Portable Vibration Calibrator. The vibration calibrator is capable of creating an ISO 16063 compliant calibration certificate and has low frequency response down to 0.7 Hertz. It's the only portable vibration calibrator on the market capable of uh, simulating vibration at speeds lower than 5 Hertz and it can be brought to the test site to make sure that the sensor, cabling, and data acquisition are working correctly and measuring correctly before a critical test. So let's start the calibration. Um, the 393B12 is one of the more sensitive piezoelectric accelerometers on the market. It's a 10,000 millivolt per G accelerometer with a plus or minus 10% tolerance at its reference frequency of 100 Hertz. Uh, because it's 10,000 millivolts per G or 10 volts per G, if you prefer, the amplitude range is only 0.5 G's peak. So this is for true seismic events, and we're going to calibrate this sensor at 0.1 G's. So that's how I have my shaker set up to begin with. Uh, amplitude of 0.1 G's peak at 100 Hertz, which is the reference frequency for the accelerometer. My output is 9,908 millivolts per G. And again, I have a plus or minus 10% tolerance on 10,000 millivolts per G, so anything from uh, 9,000 millivolts per G to 11,000 millivolts per G would pass calibration. I've saved my first data point to the memory of the calibrator and now I can decrease my uh, frequency to 50 Hertz which will be my next test point. Now this calibrator does go up to 2,000 Hertz but in this video I'm just going to show you from a uh, reference frequency of uh, 100 Hertz down to uh, 1 Hertz in this calibration. So at 50 Hertz, uh, you see the amplitude automatically holds stable at 0.1 G's without any adjustment to the amplitude dial. And my sensitivity is still 9,907 millivolts per G. I can save the point by hitting the file button. And now that, that point is saved to the memory. And I can decrease my frequency to get my next test point, which is 10 Hertz. We're going to do uh, the bare minimum here for an ISO 16063 part 21 compliant CalCert and take six test points. Um, the standard says you need to take at least six test points um, for a frequency response back-to-back -back calibration. Um, so here at 10 Hertz, we're at 0.1 G's peak and our sensitivity is 9,955. Save the point to memory and now I can really get into the low frequency test point. So let's go all the way down to 5 Hertz. Now, uh, this portable vibration calibrator is unique. Uh, it's the only product that exists on the market today um, that's a portable device capable of testing vibration sensors below 5 Hertz. So here at 5 Hertz, you can see that we quickly stabilized at 0.1 G's peak, and our sensitivity is 9,925 millivolts per G. So I can save that test point and move on to uh, my next test point, uh, which is going to be 3 Hertz. At 3 Hertz, we can generate 0.1 G's peak, uh, but we need to wait a little bit longer for the calibrator to stabilize. And you'll find that with this device, the lower in frequency you go, the greater the settling time. And that's uh, nature of the beast, um, what the calibrator is doing. 
is it is uh, mitigating the effects of distortion at these extremely low speeds. So we want to wait at least 20 seconds or so and you know that by when the backlight turns off as it just has and you can see that our amplitude has stabilized at 0.1 G's peak and the sensitivity is also stabilized at 9,870 something millivolts per G. We can hit file and save that test point as well. And finally, our last test point is going to have the longest settling time and at one hertz here. And we're also not going to be able to generate 0.1 G's peak anymore. Um, this is such a slow speed. You can see how slow the shaker is actually moving. Um, we're only capable of generating about zero, I'm sorry, 0 0.02 G's peak or closer to 0 0.18 G's peak at this speed of one hertz. So as the calibrator uh, settles in on the target amplitude and tries to mitigate the dis uh, distortion in the signal, you'll see the sensitivity of the sensor under test uh, bounce around a little bit and the sensitivity of the uh, or rather the amplitude display um, sort of uh, go a little bit high and go a little, little bit low until it stabilizes on 0 0.02 or 0 0.018 to be precise uh, G's peak. And you can see that my sensitivity is relatively stable at 9800 at this point and kind of bouncing around between 9800 and 90. 790 millivolts per G. So uh, we're in a relatively stable position here at one hertz. We can go ahead and save this point. And now the calibration is complete. So we've taken a six point calibration at one, three, five, and um, 10, 50, and 100 hertz. On this screen, I can enter the model and serial number for my 393B12 if I would like, but I'll skip that for now and just save the point to the internal memory. To export the data, hit Tools, USB Menu, and Copy. And we had two records in memory. They've both been copied to the USB. I can remove it and we can turn our attention to the computer screen. So from here, I want to open my USB. And if it's the first time that you open the workbook, it will ask you if you want to enable macros up here. I've already opened it, obviously. Then hit uh, Import Data from File. So you can make the calibration certificate in just three clicks of the mouse here. Choose the date and time. And we did the second record. And I can hit View Certificate. And there you can see my calibration certificate, which doesn't look that great because uh, we had a very stable sensor. So it drew a deviation of plus or minus 1% when plus or minus 5% would have actually passed. So this is formatable. We can make that line look a little flatter. I'm going to make this plus, center this on plus or minus 5%. Sorry, negative five, excuse me, five. And now we have a much flatter line that doesn't look so extreme. You can see that the sensitivity at reference was 9,910 millivolts per G at a test level of 0.1 G's. And as I scroll down, my maximum deviation from sensitivity at reference was only 0.9%. So this was a very good um, test. It's a back-to-back -back comparison per ISO 16063 part 21 with the mobile shop uh, model 9210D portable vibration calibrator uh, capable of low frequencies. Thanks for watching.